Welcome to the Scene Snobs Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Scene Snobs Podcast. I'm your host, McManhattan. We're back again. Producer Paul, he's, he's calling things from the sidelines, so make sure you get your comments out there. We are live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And it's a nice chill night. I'm uh, I'm actually having a very good, calm, confident day, and I'm happy about that. And I'm happy to share that with all of you. I guess I think you guys are beautiful people. And uh, on this journey, I love hanging out with you. Uh, I wanted to start off tonight. Um, so I've been, you know, something a little bit newer. We've been keeping up the Quiet on Set documentary um and just how everything was involved a few episodes ago we talked about that so make sure you go back and check out you know everything we talked about with it but they did another episode five and it is receiving a lot of backlash and it bugged me a little bit with that because the backlash from the fans it's almost like weirdly shaming the victims that are in there but also when you watch the documentary it you completely understand it because this episode was not anywhere near part of the documentary. It did not involve the documentary filmmakers of the quiet on set documentary. It was just a reunion episode. It was awkward as hell. Uh, and it seemed more exploitive than anything else. And what bugged me about it was there were some really good messages. So like I say, go back and watch it because like the victims that, you know, had spoken in the documentary that returned, um, shared a lot of great information. So I just wanted to offer, for like an alternative perspective to that because i did see a huge amount of backlash against that episode but at least go listen because there's a lot of mental health talk um and dealing and coping with uh these traumas and stuff like that and i think that those are messages that should shine through and we should be focused on even though that was a disaster of a show um so yeah just wanted to offer a different perspective on it. uh otherwise wanted to let you guys know doing really well that program that i started eight weeks ago finishing up my final two uh this week and yeah i feel really good uh helps me a lot helped me deal with a lot of things so i want to thank you guys for all your support reaching out to me talking to me about it you guys are all amazing well let's get to the movie stuff okay we have some fun topics tonight and i'm gonna bring on the man producer paul who's been sitting on the sidelines looking <laughs> pretty that whole time how you doing, buddy? Doing good. How are you? Well, I know how you're doing now, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am. I'm doing good. I do feel good. Um, I want to say uh, to everybody, thank you again for checking us out. And I appreciate you for our uh, wonderful sponsors of this video, Shopify. That's right. Go check them out down below in the description. But after the episode, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. But before we get into our first topic, I thought it'd be fun to uh talk a little bit about what we're doing next week okay because i just want to give like a sneak peek because whenever we do these mixtape episodes i get a lot of feedback that people really enjoy so announcement we're doing a feed we're doing another mixtape episode heck yeah <laughs> um i'm excited for the topic of it how do you feel about the topic of music from tv shows um, I think it's it's going to be fun because a lot of my high school years was watching a lot of the you know the big teen shows at the time, and I did pull a lot of decent music from different series. So I think it's it's going to surprise you more than anything else. Some of the the song choices um, yeah. that I might have enjoyed, guilty pleasures, as people will. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I want it to be a healthy mix, and and we're going to bring on some guests for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but I want it to be a healthy mix of not just um music from the the opener the opening mm -hmm. um credits i wanted oh, yeah, to no. be like yeah add those please yeah because that would mm -hmm. be great to hear what some of our favorites are but there's so much good music that has come from tv shows and has been used on shows that um so well that i think that should really be covered for oh, sure. yeah it's gonna be uh, but <laughs> it's gonna be a great episode i think, I think it's <laughs> so it's gonna be but, wild y'all <laughs> guys our first topic tonight when does based on a true story in movies go too far <laughs> I, I was i was happy when you chose this topic because it's something i've talked to matt about too many times uh oh, take it away my friend i want to hear your uh, opinions on this so i just feel like i i understand that you know they definitely state it's based on a true story but like you said where do we draw the line if it's not just making it theatrical what the story is i don't think they should even say based on a true story i think it should be maybe even say inspired by a, because then it just tells you oh, okay like they took sorry for using this as a thing but like a shooting at a gas station or something and they'd make a movie about it you know mm -hmm. just say inspired not don't say oh it's based on true story and if you actually know the true story you're like this isn't what happened at fucking all no 
in yeah, my well, opinion. No, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, li I live in that area. And it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I live in the area now. Well, actually, I'm a little bit farther west now, but I will, did live right in the area with the DC shooter hit a few t places mm -hmm. near 95. And I wasn't here at that time. My brother was here. My wife was here. You know, there, there's a bunch of people I knew that were living down here, but um, it just, and then I remember when they did the movie and you're right mm -hmm. like it, it's how much is sensationalized right and i just for me that's something that takes a lot away when i watch a movie because mm -hmm. like when i watch i love getting into movies you know right. like i don't mind if it's not true mm -hmm. you can do that time period or you can do that i don't give a shit if it's not true right tell me a good story <laughs> right <laughs> you know uh the patriot there's a good example mm -hmm. of this. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. It has the right amount of like that sentimental vibe to it, but there's some good action. There's some good like um, darkness to it. You know, it, it, there's like a lot to it that I just really enjoy. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the Mel Gibson one, not the uh, uh, <laughs> Steven Seagal one. <laughs> Everybody. <Yeah. laughs> I know some of my base is probably like, listen, guy. The Steven Seagal one's not great. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about the other monster. So, uh, <laughs> no, but for me, it's like, that's that's a movie that I know it's not true. Mm -hmm. There's not, there's some true real characters, like real life characters. It doesn't try to base itself on truth or anything like that. It's just a story. So that's fine by me. If, but if they had right. put like based on a true story, just because General Cornwallis <laughs> makes an appearance in the movie. Yep. Whoop, whoop. Shout out North probably, Carolina. <laughs> that's yeah, very true but they, sometimes it feels like they do it a little too overboard yes yeah good example i think is the strangers yes 100 yeah <laughs> one of the biggest sales on that movie was that it was based on a true story based on a true story the strangers came out and like you're like i need to, i need to read the story you know i'm sure it's sensationalized for hollywood and they don't stalk like this but like i gotta read the story and it was it was just based on the fact that the director was home one night and somebody knocked on his door and asked for somebody who wasn't there <laughs> i was right. like are you kidding me what how does it warrant based on a true story or based on true events or anything it's not the truth no no, not and in all. fact, when it's that minuscule, when it's that yeah. minuscule of a thing, I'm calling bullshit on all your stories. I'm just going to yeah. call you liars from now on and say, yeah. that didn't even happen. I bet you mm -hmm. stole that from somebody else. <laughs> somebody right. else told you, hey, guess what? You ever hear of? You hear Doug? <laughs> Doug's dead because somebody <laughs> knocked on his door and asked for somebody else. And then they came in. Yep. How would we know that story if Doug's dead? What are you talking about? Right. What are you talking about? Seven year old, yeah. and yeah. then that guy took that story and then made mm -hmm. another movie. <laughs> so it was based another, on true. another ridiculous horror movie that claimed it was based on a true story is Bye Bye Man. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Oh uh, my god. Absolutely not. <laughs> um like i think a husband went crazy and ended up like he did like kill his family which isn't cool but that was the only part i think that was actually true everything else was fictitious and i was like okay Wait, which bye bye man oh you know what i don't know why my mind immediately went to um amityville you i, I remember you oh. saying bye bye man but like for some reason <laughs> my mind immediately went to amityville when you said it you know it was, it was <laughs> right Oh man. Um I did see Bye Bye Man. No. Yeah. No. No, no. no. I, if if it's based on true story, I want a movie like like Patriot's Day. Like it's theatrical cuz you added Mark Wahlberg and his kind of backstory, but mm. all the events add up and were correct for the most part, you know. I get they had to make it yeah. theatrical or uh what what's the other one they did about um the Atlanta bombing for the Olympics? Uh Richard uh was oh, uh Richard Jewell. Yeah. There you go. Like that. Like that something that was like fine that. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a real event and, that, and and that's the thing like honestly completely i think they should drop based on a true story which i kind of think they have i haven't seen it in a long time but it does still exist right so don't tell me people it doesn't exist anywhere because i know it still exists uh godzilla x con like that was based <laughs> on a true story um uh. future event. <laughs> i hope not god damn so <laughs> no but for me like drop based on a true story mm -hmm. you can keep based on true events on movies like we were just talking about right you know like the richard jewels or stronger stronger is another one that was based on yeah. the boston marathon um yeah. and yeah also but from a different perspective is one of the victims right um like that's another one like i don't it, it, uh there was a oh what was it the vinnie paz movie the boxer 
Oh. Not Vinny Paz. Yeah, you said he, Vinny Paz. I was like, the rapper? <laughs> no, not the rapper. You, you're Vinny Paz. <laughs> he might actually be Vinny Paz, too. <laughs> Miles Teller played him in the movie, but he was he was like a dude who like, got in a car accident and like, broke his body. Yeah. And then he came back, and then he won a championship. Oh, a heavyweight yeah. belt. So, Or not heavyweight. He might have been in the foot. Um, inspiring story. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's a great story. I think people should really watch that movie. Um, but for me, that's based on true events. Right. You know, or the fighter. Yeah. Yeah. I am so tired of like the very thinly veiled, like, let's use base like <laughs> the only horror movie that's allowed to use based on true events, I think, mm-hmm. just for fun. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <Blair> was- <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> just because they, they that was one of the greatest trolls everybody believed it mm-hmm. i don't care yeah. who, I, don't, I don't care i don't care who who in this nomination out there is telling me i knew i knew no you didn't no i don't believe you no you didn't whoever <laughs> Maybe your was dad in charge of, <laughs> their marketing whoever's in charge of marketing i hope he made out like a bandit because that was genius like oh. getting the news people involved setting up a call it like they marketed the that website directly the tribute websites to yeah. the victims like yep. it's crazy that was amazing marketing that's why i'm like mm-hmm. that deserves to be <laughs> <laughs> i say we start mixing it up a little let's take based on a truth since, since anybody can just lie mm-hmm. right you know right. that seems to be what it is most people studios just lie so i said we start taking based on a true story and where would it fit how about rising sun based on a true story <laughs> we go fun, fun three based on a true story none of the others yeah just the just first one three no no three <laughs> oh just three just three so not okay. any of the others just three so yeah why? i'm sure why i'm sure cops have so why not <laughs> That's funny. See, I thought you were I thought you were gonna go with the conjuring, to be honest, because I was gonna be like, look, some of those possession movies are based off accounts of people that aren't around anymore. So I could I could say maybe it's based off a true story because we don't know the true story. So I guess I kind of gotta go with you. Here's my mic drop. Uh oh. <laughs> the strangers were talking about how that was based on true story, right? So yes. so similar similarly, um, <laughs> I'm taking this medication and dry mouse me. And now like, I'm like, ah, you know, like now I'm slur on everything. So <laughs> night of, nightmare on Elm street was written and it was based on true events. The, the Cambodian people who were drinking the coffee to stay awake and then dying in their sleep um, versus, uh, and also uh, Fred Krueger was somebody who terrorized Wes Craven as a kid. So <laughs> with based on, you can say based on real events, true events, based on true story. Would that mean that Bambi is more based on a true story than <laughs> the Living Dead? Yes, yes, I I can't argue with you on that. You are a hundred percent correct. <laughs> Damn. Oh man, the only so unreal. So early Disney was all about to base a true story because then you got like Old Yeller. Jesus Christ, <laughs> they're all based on a true story. Hey, it sucks in the pioneer times. <laughs> Life sucks on the old trail. Oh my god. <laughs> we already knew no. that. Uh, yeah. Oh god damn. Thanks. <laughs> I fucking loved every minute of that. I want to. I want to start putting based on a true story in front of other stuff. We have to I'll give it to Titanic. Titanic's allowed to say that. He got a lot of that shit right. <laughs> yeah. He really did his work on that one. Um. yeah now i'm trying to i'm trying to quick think of like what could i say based on truth i mean the exorcist (laughs) i think the true count is a priest did get thrown out a window and go down the steps i think that's actually true i think that's it but i don't know (laughs) i doubt that's so fucking hard i want to i want to look it up but i'm not i'll look it up later But you and heard it here first. Out a window, and <laughs> I don't even want to see what the implications behind all that are. You you <laughs> Google that on your own time. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh man, priest out of a window. <laughs> I, I'm glad that I live at a point in my life where I can say that and not fear for my eternal soul. There you go. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're probably in we're in the other universe now, you guys, because CERN started up yesterday and the eclipse and shit. We're back on the right path. We're in the correct universe. What bullshit good? is it? <laughs> Has CERN put out anything? I no, never hear it. But that's how do we know? I, I always see those videos where it's like, oh my god, there's the star that's going to appear next mm-hmm. to the moon for exactly three days, and CERN is going to be running a test. And it's mm-hmm. like, how do you know that shit? Have they put out something? <laughs> Have they nope, said something? Like. 
then if they It'll didn't say anything, how do you know they're running anything? Stop making <laughs> shit up. <laughs> they're being based on true events. That they're based they're on not- true events. <laughs> <laughs> CERN is a real place, and the person who's making that assumption has a 50 50 chance, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, why so we're not? missing it? We, we, we should make a movie it. about CERN. We could just say, no. based on true story, no one can tell us we're wrong. We got time. I want to, <laughs> we, we as the scene snobs right now are going to write down the stipulations for. <laughs> <laughs> shit um uh, we're gonna write down the stipulations for uh for based on a true story okay. so these are the new movie based on a true <laughs> we're setting the rules hell yeah so what's what's the first rule what do you have to be what there has to be at least three real event events around whatever it's going around that are factual like three about 60 percent okay yeah i'll settle for that if, yeah that or, or will you, we can even say like 66 percent so that way it's like two-thirds yeah there you go i'm cool with that so if if you have 66 66 (laughs) percent of your movie is covering the base of the reality that you're assuming Mm -hmm. so like if it's a 9-11 movie but it's a love story and then he dies in the end yeah that's a real movie stars robert great fucking movie go find it it? why do you hate that movie because it's 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 pandering bullshit it's pandering the only reason you could have happened about that movie if you took him dying out at the end in the World Trade Center at the bomb and uh, the planes on 9 11. Mm. I don't know why I made that. Question. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> not, like, I, I, listen, I don't say this lightly, but I'm thinking this movie pisses me off. See, you get me there because it does <laughs> Every time. exactly that. It does exactly that. It pisses me off for that reason. Not because I'm like some holy, like, we have to revere <laughs> everything about everyone and right. everything. But 9 11, that's that's yeah. special. Yeah. Right. Like that, that to me, I don't understand why people are like, well, people are forgetting. No, no, no. We should never forget that. Right. How are we never learning from that? But whatever. And that's yeah. not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> we got to that point because of this pandering bullshit movies that did that. I think World Trade Center with Nick Cage did a good job. That was a good base on a true story movie. Mm-hmm. It was hard warming as good as felt like the conspiracy ones all fuck you um the (laughs) go back to your flat earth caves and then uh (laughs) then you have um no 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 i welcome them too i don't care that i'll be friends with anyone i and and you know what here's the thing like if i'm friends with a flat earther and they're like people get mad they're like he doesn't believe it just listen to his stories or her stories or their stories like who cares i don't have to believe it for them to tell me about it <laughs> i listen to people talk about jesus and christianity all the time True. why can't i listen right. to somebody be like dude i live on a flat piece of land mm-hmm. cool right. right why do you think so right my, dude, my question is living what's faked cool like, why what what difference does it make even let's pretend let's pretend it the earth is flat right okay so what the fuck are you and i doing about it? okay we're still here okay (laughs) doesn't change anything about my life like okay (laughs) i'm magically rich because i think the earth's flat like no all right still here (laughs) me being mad at you for believing something i don't (laughs) doesn't put money in my pocket or food on my table or anything like that it may do that for the politicians but don't don't do that for me (laughs) so go on if you're not hurting anyone that's my only thing if you're not hurting anyone like if your belief system is like dexter you know right yeah no calm down dude don't go with your belief system you need mental uh health resources to help you that's the problem there uh not the problem it can be fixed but just don't kill (laughs) don't hurt anybody you know like that stuff like that but like if your belief system is like hey i don't know fucking the moon's made of cheese the moon is made of cheese. Cool. What kind? Right. Let's, can we can we start a week? Can we call it snobbery week? Where and let's start a thing. Let's call it snobbery week. Hashtag okay. snobbery week. <laughs> um, and on snobbery snobbery week, it's it's actually kind of funny uh, that we do it this way. On snobbery week, am I frozen? Uh-uh. Not on my screen. Okay, cool. Oh, I, it looked like it was. So, <laughs> damn it, sir. Week, my thing is everyone just be nice, right? Mm-hmm. I think it would just, uh, screen sharing was canceled. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Were you going to share a screen? No, I'm not. Oh, anything. sorry. The screen share popped up for some reason. That was weird. So, all right, snobbery week. Let's get back to it. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Guys, I come up with the shit I'm on the fly. So, please <laughs> don't get mad and be like, oh, dude, he's high and he's doing like, no, I just, I'm, 
my stupid brain just vomits ideas. So, <laughs> and then my friends just sit there and laugh at me. So, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> we just have to, if everything, every interaction we have, we have to commit to being non confrontational in reaction. Huh. So, it's like a fight club challenge, <laughs> but, but not fighting. Or reverse. But yeah, but reverse, reverse like just club. no matter what. <laughs> You want you can join up on the Discord. Let's let's do reverse fight club. So <laughs> for one week, right? Um, right. it's we call it snobbery week. I'm taking that word back. Oh, and we just have to there we go. Hashtag snobbery week. We are just going to every confrontation, every interaction, mm -hmm. if it goes to set you off, even if it's not, even if it's a good interaction, you have to meet it with a uh, positive. Okay. No matter what, like if somebody comes at you angry, like give me a, an example, throw something at me that would cause a confrontation. Uh, I asked you to do this project and I think you did a poor job and you acted like you didn't care about it. This was okay. All right. All right. I can work with that. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Hey, I appreciate you. Let me know that. Could you explain to me what, I missed or what I messed up on. So then that way I can make sure that I don't do that again. There you go. I like it. You like just kind of reacting with the, like, yeah, kind of like diffusing stuff and immediately like going towards more of a positive. Cause your boss is going to look at you and be like, yeah, yeah, no problem. It was just something minor. You just do something like, like they always want to make <laughs> bigger things out of it. And yeah. now if you give him a compliment and be like, I'm going to like, it's going to help. Right. So yeah, he's going to slide me a cup to pee in, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wife it's gets mad call. at you. Cause you didn't do the dishes. You know, all week I've been doing the dishes. I issued one night. You didn't do a dish. You left them in there all morning, all night. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I did. That was that was wrong. But how about we do them together? I think that would be a lot of fun, you know? Or would you like to stand here and talk to me while I do them? Maybe keep me company. I'd really appreciate it. There you go. Boom. Boom. Done. Now you got quality time, which feels good. And that's yeah. and that's what the movie Remember Me did for 9 11. It tried to make oh good no, out of a bad situation. I say it the other way. way. <laughs> you have to flutter. go the other way no pander <laughs> no re no terrible reactions love your flat earthers make them a part of your community make them make them join hands around the world make all oh, flat earthers oh, just nice to meet you <laughs> make, make all flat earthers i gotta walk away like this just in be TV. friends all around the earth <laughs> I still do. I don't care. You can join the Snob Nation. I'll have anybody. As long as you're not an asshole and you're not trying to hurt anyone and you're cool like with what other people believe, you can always right. join. Man. The community's open. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, It's true. But all right. We've done enough with based on a true story. <laughs> Snobbery <laughs> Week is now going to be a thing. Probably a disaster one. But uh, I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is movies. Yes. yes more so <laughs> not based on a true story movies just regular movies any movie really um i want to talk about at home movie yes. snacks and meals right because that's an important component my friend yes it is and again i want to make sure because sure. i have to eat different things at different mm -hmm. times for different stuff i'm watching mm -hmm. you know what's one i want to share with you and, I, and because of the movies we're covering tonight in our review and because i knew that horror was going to come up because we are representatives of carolina fear fest yes sir you guys go five years of fear go get your tickets join us come hang out it's gonna be a good time but awesome <laughs> dude i'm wearing this because horror the thing especially cold movie you yep. gotta have a warm meal okay it's got it's got to have protein. Okay. Sometimes maybe I need a stew. Okay. And like for my snack, I like to make s'mores. Interesting. Okay. Fire like all it. around that baby. I like it. So, <laughs> so what about you, my friend? We, we like, give me give me some examples for you. So I kind of go disgusting on things. So people are probably going to be like, what is wrong with you? So like for the Hills Have Eyes, for instance, specifically, I watch that movie. I have to eat spaghetti because it reminds me of all the guts and gore for whatever reason. It just gets me in the mood of, you know, I need some good like solid meatballs not the not the little ones like the big pebbles <laughs> yeah um but typically if i'm doing most other horror movies i like having more of a uh a sub almost something a little more basic something like that mm -hmm. um that's always going to be followed with a sweet tea um and then as far as a snack goes i need something smaller like a bunch of crunch or uh some uh, goobers something light like that um, but if I'm watching a comedy, that's where I pig out. So that's the feast. That's where I, you know, I eat some good steak or something like that. And we got chips out and pretzels and cream Ooh, cheese. All we things. changed things up a little bit. <laughs> you and I are a little different. But um, snack wise, like period, it. when I'm at home, 
there's always going to be ice cream because I'm lactose intolerant. So at the theater, I can't be doing that. But at home, at the bathroom right there, bro. No problem. Yeah, just saying. Get it, man. <laughs> All right, I get a little. I get a little. Well, before I get started, I just want to say thank you, Matt, for joining in uh, and Derpy. Um, Derpy, actually, before we get to Matt's, he was covering some of CinemaCon. He said it was happening right now, and I guess the Crow remake was delayed. I'm not going to boohoo over it, though. Um, <laughs> Matt, I wanted to point out because he was talking about the last one. The issue is that I'll convince other low IQ idiots and goes against all the science proof. It dumbs down society. No, sir. <laughs> I do love yes. it. it is ironic that you did I did misspell society. <laughs> I love you. I love you uh, and, and exterminate flutter. That is wrong. Stop being a Dalek. <laughs> Don't be a Dalek. No extermination whatsoever. Whatsoever. I agree, Matt. No, <laughs> no, we got to enjoy them. We got to, we got to, we got to meet them. I don't know why. Who cares? There are people out there who believe the sun is a god, and we don't give a shit. We're like, no, that's old world stuff. It's the new world stuff that we're so afraid of. Like the people who are like, I want to melt, meld with technology. It's like, wow, you're weird. What? Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know someone that sun worships. He literally like will close his eyes and stare towards the sun for an hour every morning. Every that's, morning. That's just an odd just thing, in my dark. opinion. Just, just, that's it's, it's it interesting. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever, man. Weird, odd, unique, all outcast. All of that shit is stuff that I love. <laughs> I love talking to people, especially when they're hanging out and they're talking like this. I, listen, I don't like people who are pushy. I don't like people who are trying to force me to do things, you know? Mm -hmm. So I get it if the flat earthers are like literally like, like Jehovah's Witnesses. I've talked to Jehovah's Witnesses before. They're fine people. And as long as they're not trying to sell me on anything, mm -hmm. good, you know, fine. Right. It's when you're invasive with it, that's when I'm like, mm, and no more worse than the Catholic Church. But you know me. So right. <laughs> when you talk about invasive, <laughs> yeah, you talk about invasive, like I mean, and I'm only going by the movie we're gonna cover tonight, the first moment. Sorry. Um <laughs> so so I don't care. Like, come and talk to me. I'll listen to flat earthers. I doesn't mean I have to adopt their science. Mm -mm. I'll listen to Trumpers, the Mahega crew. I don't care. I don't believe in Jewish space lasers. I'm cool with it. I'm not going to drink bleach, but that don't mean that I think everybody feels that way. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not. So I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I'll listen to people because I don't dumb them down to those stupid statements. That's fair. That's and boy, weak, that's every week. That's reactionary. Like I don't want to hate everybody just because like this dude said something mm -hmm. stupid and people are still got, voting for him. That's because the other guy, the, <laughs> the other guy on the other side, says plenty stupid too, and people still vote. For him. So it is what it is um at the moment but as you know you're there for me we'll still be here you guys regardless this is what <laughs> this is matt's fault i wanted to talk movie snap he had to say <laughs> exterminate flat earthers so now yeah. i have to talk him down from the ledge <laughs> I, I wish matt had said flatten flat earthers like just gone with it that way i mean for the pun that would have been really <laughs> honestly i probably would have glossed over if he had done that i probably been like oh that was funny man and then just like kept going like you used the pun i love puns like, I would have dad joked that the whole way. Yeah. This is it. There you go. You snobbery week. That's why you're a scene snob. You get it. You snobbery <laughs> week it. I would have, you know, I would have chosen Latin flat earthers. You made it better. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> he did. He did make it better. Flat and flat earthers. It's a dad joke. What's going on, Jason? Thanks for joining in. Uh, Jason? Yeah. Paul told me during Scary Snobs, he moon worships. That was in confidence. Uh, yeah, but he's a We don't need to get into that right now. That is true. <laughs> I don't, I don't doubt that. It's I've never seen you during. That's a why I do. Night, yeah, that's why I do night security, so I can run around the park all naked and just do my little thing. It's the it's a whole thing. It's all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I have so many questions. <laughs> the problem is, is I the problem is, is you don't you, you don't think I'm a werewolf, but you know I do do those things, which is fair. I know that's the know. thing. Like <laughs> no point when you were saying that did I picture you as a werewolf. <laughs> I literally just pictured naked ass donkey dick Paul running down this whole line. <laughs> naked why? Because he's just like thinks he's a wolf. Yep. <laughs> and that's how you check a security system, you guys, to make sure if anyone's watching the cameras, because no one said shit to me the last three years. Samantha so uh... he's definitely a werewolf. <laughs> I, that's why I like you. I like werewolves more. Yep. <laughs> but probably someone was so like confused why I was doing it that they still haven't said anything for three years. But hey. We'll find out this year. What happened again? I mean, I get it. <laughs> That's the weird part. Like you said it, I, and I was like, I get it. Like whatever. I kind of embrace absurdity. 
whatever, man. I know. Like, that's why I'm not upset. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, we came up with one rule for the based on a true story. <laughs> Every week, we should just add to them. <laughs> Give me a Perfect. project for a while. Writing, writing a bill of rights for the based on a true story. <laughs> if you break it, Pro- you're done. <laughs> project Snob is in effect. <laughs> oh my God. Scene snobs are back again. We're tanking <laughs> topics like left and right. It's amazing. Um, I love it. All right. I will say this when I want, just so we can get into the review, because I have lots to say. I like, I will make hamburger helper crunchy taco Ooh. usually or my taco dip like i have a personal taco dip i make i will make mm. one of those two things generally sometimes it's or it's other tex-mex based food whenever joe bob is on oh um, okay i just get in the mood i like that you know style of it and stuff it, again people who align differently than me and i love talking to them <laughs> so i'm just pointing out all those uh little things to my werewolf buddy here and all of you podcast <laughs> um it is so cool to have oh, we might have changed your name i might have oh. changed it from producer paul or or, yeah. or add or it's either <laughs> subtract or add <laughs> producer paul the werewolf just call me the wolf man i'll start to change my voice <laughs> like, I, like you, I don't know <laughs> i want to get you the little wolf ears from great wolf lodge yes <laughs> And that's like that being you that please make that a part of your image for the show. Producer Paul, the werewolf. Okay. If, it, if it makes you feel, co- I'll wear them too. Heck yeah. And then you can, can I, just be like, he forces me to wear them. Like, you know, you that know. means we're going to have a cousin in the wolf. That's going to be at Carolina fear fest. That's there dressed as a wolf every year. I'm in to it. We got to get, get, we get the wolf I'll next to the wolf. You. And I don't I'm know who they, are, you, who they are. I'm getting you wolf ears. Okay. I'm getting you wolf ears just That's be nice. aware and it's nice. i promise you i promise you it's not to make fun no but I give love me a wolf hood because then it comes with the little paws with the claws i like them. i love those? the idea of you being <laughs> <laughs> being like the wolf man or something paul the wolf man <laughs> i'm ferocious why does your wolf man sound like a kitty cat because i'm embracing the snobbery i'm not trying to kill you i'm just trying to love you Rare. You're doing great. I'm not mad at it. You're making me feel so much better. <laughs> and I was already in a good mood. So, like, you're the happy we- Paul, the happy werewolf. Yep, I love it. I love it. it's the best. I knew I loved you. You're my kindred spirit because I love werewolves. Yes. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So I do that. Um, generally, my snacks, though, of choice are like usually nachos. I'm like gonna play nachos or something. Um, yeah. Do you do a homemade like- dip or a certain dip? Uh, I have so. There's a great place, and I'll give them a shout out. It's a place called Frizzles. Um, they uh, they have great dips okay. that they make, and I go and I get them from there. Um, and then sometimes, like I'll make like my taco dip is my taco dip, so I make that, mm-hmm. and I make a good um, uh, uh, French onion dip. Okay. So uh, yeah, so stuff like that, I don't mind making, but eh, generally no. Mary makes some dips though. That's pretty. They're pretty good. I okay. did start following a thing that gives you the recipes for all your favorite favorite dips. Ooh, that's pretty cool. All right, since we're talking snacks, mm-hmm. what's your favorite dip with what? Ooh. I'll start us off for me. I love onion rings. By the way, I love beer battered first, but I don't mind a breaded. Mm-hmm. Um. And if they're and kind of overly done, like I, I I like them a little harder than I like putting things in my mouth a little harder than uh, softer. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry, that's got away from me. Uh, so that's why uh, your mouth's dry. <laughs> so salty. <laughs> <laughs> all right trailing off real quick i was watching golden girls last night oh, wow. and it made, they had the greatest fucking ejaculation and joke of all time oh, what they say rose picks up the phone and she's it's a friend of hers from saint olaf and like yeah. all she goes is like what are you trying to say i can't make it out oh god oh god oh god <laughs> oh my god i gotta go talk to miles and then she hands the phone to blanche oh no no oh she goes oh god it's raining and then, like, she hands the phone to Blanche and runs away because I guess it's a superstition if it's raining something, mm-hmm. you know, saying all of you, I got to go do something. And so Blanche picks up the phone and goes, mm, sounds like it's pouring. I'm like, <laughs> immediately, I had a flashback that I watched that show with my grandmother. Oh, I, I've watched that show since. And mm-hmm. I think I just never, don't say, oh, like, that was weird. No, it's endearing. Like, I feel that. Is it? Like, oh. After I just yeah. made an ejaculation joke <laughs> reference? Hey. 
whatever reminds you of people you love. You know? She used to laugh at that shit all the time. It weirded <laughs> me out to think about that now because that was like the second sex joke in that episode. And I'm like, they're going hard. I don't remember going this hard. <laughs> See, now I need to watch the Golden Girls. I know that'd make Matt happy because that's one of Matt's favorite shows. It's so good. It always is. Every time, every episode is an amazing episode. I said out loud, that's weird. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> we said a lot of weird shit in a very short period of time. <laughs> We embracing of the dude. I'm in full yeah. effect. Nick Manhattan is back again after just doing this program. <laughs> yeah. I feel absurd again, man. It feels great. <laughs> I'm, pumped. I'm having fun. This is a fun conversation. I uh, dude, fucking snacks, real quick. Dips. We were yes, talking sir. about them. Um, yep. have you ever had Zaxby's? Yeah, Zaxby's dip with any chicken is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I love if I have to go with a barbecue sauce from a fast food restaurant, like a dip. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying if I have to, if I can go with my own, like going to other uh, places, like at home made mm-hmm. um, stuff, I will. I I prefer that barbecue sauce, but I will go with like um. Mc- Mm, oh my god it's so good but mcdonald's probably is my favorite okay out of That's the fast food out of the fa- okay. and only barbecue sauce okay they're tangy barbecue yes sir it's pretty but good. don't sleep on wendy's that's that's fair yeah and sweet and sour sauce from mcdonald's is pretty something pretty banging too yep. i have um, to give a shout out though my, my favorite dip with chip is uh matt makes this killer at home chili in a crock pot and you eat that with some fritos chips fuck <laughs> like that's it's like crack. And I don't eat half the shit that's in there because I hate onions and I hate actual tomatoes. And I know he has them in there. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I was listening to your story. And then Jason had to put this all for your grandma and the sex. And then it reminded me of another story. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a little conflicted. I don't know if I should tell it. Please don't. <laughs> not, save for the next episode. It has nothing to do with my grandma. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> You're going to. Oh, shit. You are your own grandpa. Oh, go ahead and go no, with no, it. No, no, Here no, we no, go. no, 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 Yes. No, no. Nothing like that. <laughs> Nothing like that. Only my grandmother's place. <laughs> God, I told you not to do and that I, at a gravesite. No, no, no. <laughs> wrong place. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, a Japanese anime? Do you think I had sex on her tombstone? I don't know, man. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> i can't i can make my thing black and white just oh uh, like, <laughs> i got you we can do this oh my god that made me cry on that one <laughs> and then he falls <laughs> over wendy's it's so good. god i love jason oh. <laughs> he did remind me of some shit i'll tell you that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be holy <laughs> shit i'm i am um yeah that was a good one so i can't even think of dips and snacks anymore i'm done with this time segwaying hard out of it I'm <laughs> so hard out of this topic that one <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> It always starts with a laugh because it comes right in at the heel of the podcast part. Oh my god! Well, oh fuck! I didn't. I only put our ratings. I didn't get the thing with the the poster for the movie. So we're gonna talk about Monkey Man first. Uh, on this on this episode, we got a really absurd. Brace the absurdity, baby. That's what it's all about. Um, we got really absurd, so that's why we're laughing. But we are reviewing tonight Monkey Man um, yes, from producer Jordan Peele and director, new director, and written by uh, Dev Patel. Um, we'll talk about that second. We're going to talk about uh, the first Omen first. And uh, that one gets interesting. So this one is a prequel. It's getting the exorcist treatment, as I call it, uh, the Omen franchise. And it's getting a prequel uh, about the mother of Damien, who may or may not be at an orphanage or a nun. And I say that not lightly because this movie. Um, before we get begin, we will be spoiling a little bit. Um, we try not to go too hard. Uh, if you've seen it, great. If you haven't, you don't want any spoilers. We get it. Tune out. Maybe come check us out and again. Um, but we're not going to go too hard into it. We're not going to reveal too much. But there really wasn't big twists or turns with these. So it's not really a spoiling thing. So the stuff, in my opinion, that we could spoil, 
like the cool death scenes, stuff like that. We're gonna spoil this too. <laughs> so, <laughs> we may. So uh, just deal with us. Yeah. But um, let's talk about the first omen. So I'm. You have a lot more to say on this than I do. <laughs> and that's probably. And I'm still long winded. So I, I want you to finish this one off. I'm gonna just go real quick and say I think this was a most needless movie. I think I've ever seen. It was pointless to a point where it's like I did not need this story extended whatsoever. I could you and you could have just retold it. You could have done it. It could have it could have been done really well. In fact, you could have made the prequel interesting. It could have been really interesting if it tied in together or just stop trying to like reinvent the original or re- retcon or do this. Like, why not tie it in? Like, I think at one point, I I think I fixed this movie at one point with my hypothesis where I thought she was Mm -hmm. (laughs) the nun who was taking care of the little girl who would go on to become the the mother of Damien, you know, or or she was going to give birth to Antichrist, rather. Uh, You know, Um, the nun, I thought it would have been cool if, like, she ended up being the nanny who hangs herself because she has a direct contact. They, They reinvent that scene in this. Mm-hmm. stupidly i'm sorry that mm-hmm. it was i mean it, it, the visuals were cool but it's like it was kind of pointless i was like why you're selling it you know it's 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 kind of like how star wars fucked up the prequels like you know it's you're going back there and you're just you're trying to force us to like something and it's just not mm-hmm. there just give us the stuff that we like um and tell a good story which none of which they do so really but that really bothered me uh, the visuals are cool. Um, again, like there's some death scenes. Uh, there's one with the stainless glass, uh, stainless glass and such, and two priests. Charles Dance being one of them. Thought it was really well done. I really liked it. Uh, the way they played it out. Um, yeah, there's just some really cool stuff here. Uh, that amounts to nothing in this whole bubble of of a terrible movie. I really have a very big problem with the subgenre of like christian based horror films mostly they're the exorcism films that involve religion yeah in in a major capacity like uh there there are some movies that are doing it up to my understanding late night with the devil and you know other movies like there's where it doesn't have a religious component but there is possession involved so mm-hmm. remove those i'm not saying possession films right i'm saying christian or religious based pos- or, or no i'll just say christian based pos- uh like horror stuff like that honestly at this point give it to christian screenwriters christian based screenwriters right go for it and go for that christian base like they like the christian base has a huge movie industry yeah yeah. on its own and and when i say huge i'm not saying slouch you know you may not agree with the messages or whatever and i'm not even you know i've seen some i like the sentimental ones not bad um the the tear jerkers i don't like the ones that like make you feel like it's the apocalypse if we take your guns or something like it's like it's Mm -hmm. just as outlandish as the other side it's just like it's too much but like the 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 football ones and so like yeah listen i like it i dig Mm -hmm. it it's fun so uh (laughs) stuff like that you know and it's the same with like those hallmark movies like yeah i don't like those movies but i'll watch jesse stone all fucking day long let's do this you don't know what i'm talking no, that's your problem. <laughs> Go watch <laughs> Stone after the show. Uh, so no, but so for me, it's like I think it would be a cool experiment to just be like, all right, we're going to hire Christian-based writers to write mm-hmm. these types of horror movies more for their base and catch on, see if it works, right? Or at the very least, change it up and revitalize it a little bit so that way other writers get inspired, right? You know, mm-hmm. there's a reason William Pe- Pleader Bla- uh, Blatley made The Exorcist work so well. He research the actual religion put the faith behind it Mm -hmm. you know and that it feels hollow when you don't do that and out of all of the shit that i just mentioned this movie the most hollow and that is why i say that (laughs) and that's all i gotta say before i give my rating paul take it away so if you guys want to see a good version of this movie just watch the original omen with gregory peck and uh there you go because this one was a snooze fest they stole too many of the scenes from the original i mean you can't beat gregory peck like at the end of the day because even the first omen or not the first omen like this movie like the original omen movie um you just can't beat his acting like just period so even though it might be a little more boring by horror standards that omen is still the better one of all of them in my opinion this one like you said it it was pointless um and unfortunately you know we watched that the gregory peck omen before we saw this because you know i was hoping to build more story and the the trailer for first omen looked amazing they made it seem like it was gonna be ominous and creepy and i was like oh hell yeah and was 
disappointed from start to finish just being like oh that's from the other omen that's from the other omen what what is this why are we talking about this okay um it, it's one I, not to steal from sturdy but i'd say watch at your own risk uh i wouldn't recommend this movie to anybody unless they want to be bored if they're like oh i want to watch something to fall asleep to there you go watch the first one i honestly this is th- these tropes too and it, it, it what bothers me i think the most about this movie is um its portrayal of like women yeah it's it's own and, and for the reason is the unbelievable unbelievability of it it's kind of takes the humanity out of women in a weird way yeah and its characters yeah and and it's trying to force a different narrative of what the original was and i think that's what it was it was like you're trying to make this societal but you're not understanding the reason people like the antichrist story right so when it comes down to it it's just kind of like all right so what do we and you know i don't know the director um yeah she's a female filmmaker she wrote it too and stuff but like this didn't feel like it was it felt more formulaic in tone to what we see how women are portrayed and like now get mad whoever wants to get mad at that statement be like oh you but look at so many great horror movies with female leads Mm -hmm. where they're written so well and that's especially in recent years where you get some really cool stuff, especially from younger actors, uh, like Totally Killer was a really good one, Lisa Frankenstein, um, like you know stuff like that where you're getting these really strong female characters that are enhancing the story of the movie, mm-hmm. you know, of the narrative, you know, within the movie. And that's what I'm talking about when I say this. Right. These characters did none of that. Mm-hmm. They were kind of pointless. They were you. It was almost like these these useless tropes that have been, you know so far gone you just want to get away from them um and that i i just had to kind of drop the hammer on that i just really did not like this movie Mm -mm, same (laughs) (laughs) our ratings for this are two two out of five for both um yeah we're we got pretty similar um minds i think when it comes to this stuff but yeah um we're now we're going to talk about monkey man heck yeah and i wanted to say this (laughs) because this is another one that was so different it took sort of a subgenre within itself one that you would put like maybe the john wicks in and and the stuff like that the mr nobodies Mm -hmm. um where you kind of get these like characters you would not think are badass right but then they have this badass story to them and what bugs me about the rest is like mr nobody and john wick in particular (laughs) they think it's interesting to leave their backstories out to leave them haunted it worked in the first john wick and then you tried to expand in every other one and i just don't think it worked Gotcha. I didn't mind the world building, but it was too much. Mm-hmm. I would have preferred you build an anthology out of this than just focus on the one guy. Personally, that's just me. He could mm-hmm. still be there, right? And he could even be in the head of it. But now you're building on a whole world rather than just focusing on the chase on him or something. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that because we're focusing on Monkey Man. And the reason I come back to that is that's what they gave you in this. Mm-hmm. And I really think the backstory that they added to this enhanced it so much. Yeah, I really because i i love that he's not a great fighter in the beginning no <laughs> at he all sucks at it but he's good at getting his ass kicked yeah he can take a hit no problem yeah yeah <laughs> but he sucks at fighting and that's how he makes his money and he's he's like got this whole revenge idealistic plot against the guy who killed his mother mm-hmm. well you assume they never really say his mother until a certain yeah. point i mean yeah. you do get there fairly quickly i'm not saying but like yeah. in the beginning they don't immediately you just kind of assume it is because he's a kid right um so like again there's no twist there mm-hmm. but to find out the like how the society plays into it i really love this movie i have one gripe against it. okay and it's an odd gripe i don't do this often mm-hmm. so this is kind of a monumental one because like i i don't even know when the last time i said it was um but on the review i think it should have been longer huh I think it should have been longer and I think it should have been in the back half when he finally is trained and he's going, when he takes the money and he goes to make the fight to get more money for him so they can pay off and they start cheering monkey man. I yeah. thought they should have made Monkey Man. Like, he doesn't take the mask off by that point. He's right. basically Batman at this point. He's still gunning for revenge. He wants to kill. But now he's taking down the corruption. Little right. by little. He's, he's kind of like Deadpooling it a little bit right. to get to that final killer. But he's taking out the business along the way. Right. 
I thought, or old boy even would be another good, uh, you know, yeah. sort of parallel. I thought if you made it a little, and you don't have to go too long, you can montage that. Right. I'd say you can add maybe another 20 minutes to this. And if you added that story where like these guys feel the pressure because the monkey man is tearing their business down. Yeah. We need to go on the hunt. And then that's when he decides I'm going for them. And then it turns into like that raid type scenario where he's going up the castle. Yeah. And that should have been longer in my opinion. Yes. It was that was too long, in my opinion. Here, here's a weird. I know this is my, where my brain gets absurd, but that was too long because they didn't have that longer story, right? Of him bringing down sort of the corruption along with it. Because by the time he dies, he takes mm-hmm. off the mask and kills the guy, and he dies. Mm-hmm. And yes, okay, I know I ruined the end, but like it's beautiful. Like that isn't the thing that you should be with because there's more to it after that. And it's it's fucking beautiful, and it's one of the most. And Dev Patel, keep making movies, man. You're a smart dude. I I, I yeah. really like your imagery. I really like the sound to this. You had a great sound in this. The music, oh, the music was fantastic. It was like a uh, so, you know, it was like Janice was in there. Uh, I think the Doors was in there at some point. Mm-hmm. Like all this different music, but it had like this very India based music background, like the culture. Yes. It was like, but it was the singers. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I thought, and it oh, added such it. a great. <laughs> I went into this movie like I'm not really interested. It's another John mm-hmm. Wick. I don't care. It's just it's another actor trying to make himself look like a badass. Mm-hmm. And I want to apologize for that because this was a really good fucking movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I do wish people would get out to see it. I think go see it in theaters. It's a good mix. Everybody like the, the comedy was a good amount. Um, the it gets it gets dark, but it also like is heartwarming at times. Really, really good, well paced story. I just wish it was longer so that way we could have added the element of him tearing down the corruption along the way, mm-hmm. not just killing them. That's a personal preference, though. Right. Mm-hmm. I get why he did what he did. Doesn't make the movie bad. It's just a personal preference. I would have liked to have seen that because then I think that would have added to the Monkey Man ideal more and made it more of a bigger like wow the monkey man's tearing down the corruption that's crazy um i've gone on i talked <laughs> uh but i was just really excited to do it what is tell us what do you think about this movie so i looked a lot into the backstory of just the film period um before i saw it so i kind of was going and thinking it kind of might be a little low rate i get you know monkey paw productions helped out so jordan peele you know backed it and brought him back but when i heard that netflix dropped him i'm like oh shit this must it must be a bad story since Netflix dropped him. And then I heard they had like every problem you could have while filming. They had to where they had to film some scenes even on their phones. So mm-hmm. I was like, eh, I feel like this is going to be like you said, kind of a John wick, but done really poorly. And kind of like you, I, I need to apologize. Cause I was so wrong. Um, the acting was spot on. I loved how much they, they made it tie into, um, you know, an Indian religious story. I mm-hmm. thought that was really cool. Um, I thought it was done right. I think if, if you're not one that loves John Wick and you want more of a realistic one, this is a realistic esque John Wick because he's not invincible. You know, he's mm-hmm. not killing 120 people by himself and barely getting a bruise here or there. Um, he yeah. gets hurt, <laughs> he gets stabbed, he gets messed up. Um, and like you said, the culture just visually, a lot of those scenes and the parties, and I, I forget what they said, not New Year's, but whatever they were celebrating, I just loved all the colors and the music. Um, mm-hmm. I like that he paid homage to that community um, because I think that brought a shine a light on that community. Cause now I want to know more about Indian culture and look into that a little bit more just cause I was like, you know, this was an interesting story. I liked how that one, I guess, religious tale of monkey man was the whole basis kind of of him and, you know, the villain in this and uh, they tied it all together. And I thought it was done beautifully. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. No, 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 please continue. I, I really want to hear but i just i i 100 agree i and i want to pull it up again because um <clears throat> just some information on it i want to see uh how it did in the box office this weekend because mm-hmm. i have to tell you like you could continue the story you could like it like oh, i yeah. said he died that's not necessarily true right you know you so know. like <laughs> because there is also a lore there that can he die right and they're and they play into it really well like it's it, and that's mm-hmm. that's what i i love religious movies like this when there's mm-hmm. a religious basis to it because it's not force feeding anything but it's 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 telling me about the culture of your religion right and that makes me want to read up on it more right i'm telling you like the the christian pr people need to like 
create a culture <laughs> where you're like enticed to come in and like be like, I want to learn about this more. <laughs> Take it yeah. from this because this movie does do it because it has a good, it really does. It share it shares the culture so well from all many different from the dark points to the really mm -hmm. beautiful points. I love the way you put that. Um, and it, it did its budget was 10 million, it only made 12.7. I urge people to go see this. I think it's a really good film. It's a violent film, yes. Um so like if you're doing thinking of date night but it's not a horror movie mm -mm, no not at all i think it got a connotation of a horror movie because it's dark and it's uh monkey paw, it, it, <laughs> monkey paw you know we're used to that but like i think it's uh <laughs> I, I try to have some fun <laughs> Masturbators, I love that. I love that. Masturbators. Uh, <laughs> I, I bet you do, man. I, like, I want to talk to you. I love that. <laughs> That's I could great. go on all day with the masturbators. <laughs> all, yeah, we can masturbate all day. <laughs> and I'm all for it. Let's do it. Oh man. Um I'd have I'd have a lot of fun masturbating with you. Yeah. Um and Patel, I Patel took a beating. Devil? He took a beating during that movie. Like when you hear he about did, the injuries, dude. got pink eye. You know, and that that was crazy. <laughs> that, that told me so much about the film beforehand, because like I said, like the bathroom scene, you know, you're not with these big Hollywood productions where it's a whole clean set and stuff like nah, you filmed in like a bathroom and I'm sure someone tried to clean and I'm not trying to say someone did a shit job, but obviously it wasn't clean enough to where he, he got pink eye like you never hear Tom Cruise got pink eye filming, you know, Mission Impossible 19. Like that never happens. Like this man went through it, kept trying. Netflix dropped him and he yeah. still kept his head up. Um, so yeah, you guys go see it because he deserves it. This movie deserves it. Um, I'd like to see more from him. Yes. And I respect, I, that's why I love Jordan Peele. This just made me love him more that he said, wow, this is great. I love it. I want to back it. Let's push it. And, he and that's it. And I want to say this, um, when we're talking about filmmakers who are people of color, you know, and then mm -hmm. we talk about movies that are coming more from people of color. And uh, a lot of people argued about the Jordan Peele when he was like, and he's so out of context whenever they quote it. It was like, you know, I don't want to cast the white guy in the leads in my, or the mm -hmm. white people in the leads in my movies anymore. I've seen those movies. Like, I love that there is, like, he's putting out great voices, telling great stories from different mm -hmm. point of views. Because... I gotta be honest, defend defend what you want, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of greatness coming out of anywhere else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so like so like and I'm not just saying it's Jordan Peele, but like the a lot of the indie, you know, those guys and stuff like that are putting out some really great stuff. So and that's what yeah. I want. I want more filmmakers like that. Charto Copley played a great character in this. Um, I don't know her name. Uh, oh, the oh, what's his name? Uh, Rana Singh, who played the bad guy. I know it because yeah. of the name patch. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew his name off the bat, uh, but he he was fantastic. He was so terrifying. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> And even the guy who played like the head leader, yeah, the religious leader that he was working for that was corrupt. Um, the whole element I thought did a great job. I just, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I can gush and gush about this movie all day long, but <laughs> that is one of the things I, I think it was just a beautifully done movie. And our ratings for this were I gave it a four and you gave it a three and a half. That's a good yep. rating, mm -hmm. that's a strong rating. Yes, that's definitely a go check it out, I think, for both of us. Yes, <laughs> and I will tell you guys, when I went into it, I, I thought it might be a two at best going into it so i was pleasantly very happily surprised that it turned out how it did i'm also going to argue maybe go see this before going seeing anything coming out this weekend if you want to go see what's coming out this weekend go ahead <laughs> i don't care i just the whole civil war thing and it feels like such a plant movie mm -hmm. and it feels like so ridiculous and that's fine i don't mind weird <laughs> absurd movies and checking it out but like it also feels like that pandering i was talking about it's like the extreme side of putting robert pattinson in the world trade center and, re and remember <laughs> me and if anybody's watching this review as a clip and that wonders what i'm talking about go watch the podcast you'll figure it out so yes. and, and i said smugly but please go do it. it is a lot of fun we had a good time but um it's 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 one of those things where it's like it's it's extreme pandering the other side that's really just trying to scare people against a certain type of people and i i don't again i'm not about that snobbery week so i i think i'm just yep. gonna be like have fun with your civil war i am going to i i don't know if it's living in my own little bubble <laughs> yeah. believe that the world isn't turning into that but like you know i just don't know if i'm ready for that type of movie yet or have a that's desire fair. to see it no, that's fair. um but i'm ready a, for civil a, war. a rough way to tell you <laughs> yeah, i'm probably not doing that one next week <laughs> but, um I'll go see but it. I live in the Bible Belt. That would be a good go see or stream. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Um, all right. 
well, mixed movie pick for the week comes from 1948. Uh, I actually, this is one of my, the movies it's called the bicycle thieves out of Italy. Hmm. Well, actually it's originally called the bicycle thief, I believe. Um, yeah, I, I, I did some research on it and I believe it was the bicycle thief. And then they called it the bicycle thieves when they brought it over to America or sort of playing it. Um, so it's such a great tale about in post-war Italy, uh, work is scarce. Having a bicycle to be able to get back and forth from work is a big commodity, a huge okay. asset in that world for people just looking to, to scrape by. And a man finally gets a bicycle, saves up for it, finally gets it, gets the job. He's starting in a couple of days and it gets stolen. Mm -hmm. And this movie follows he and his son on their desperate attempt to get their bicycle back and i know it's, it may sound silly or juvenile when you say bicycle it is a wonderful tale but it is also it, it, it holds a lot of things up to a microscope like that's why i say i don't feel like going to see movies like civil war personal mm -hmm. preference not saying i'll never see it not right. saying i won't review it but that for me is like one i don't want to go see those like propaganda films that are pointing at one side or this side or the other thing i want to watch movies like this that smartly display what economic downturn is how it feels in reconstruction trying to keep your family afloat and the desperate need for that um and not as a downer but as a the beautiful tale that is interwoven between the father and son and, and what's being taught and, and just that whole examination of that life this is a fantastic movie in fact on the scene snobs facebook page very early on when we were called movies 365 and this is back in 2013 this is one of the first movies i did a written review on so it should still okay. be up there so you might be able to find it it used to be by the uh the um film poster so i don't know if it's the same one but you can go check it out there so there's more to say on that if you go read it but this is a fantastic film i do think everybody should go check it out it's an italian film from 1948 the bicycle thief uh, or the bicycle thieves one or the other but please go check it out uh yeah that's my mixed movie pick for the week guys we're here at the end a couple things i gotta tell you a couple of little little blurbs i gotta say to you <laughs> shopify we love you you out there you want to start a business shopify is how you do it if you don't know that i don't know what to tell you <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though, uh, <laughs> Shopify is great. Shopify does help you start your e-commerce business from beginning to end. They'll help you put everything together, uh, and they'll take care of things. You have support through them, stuff like that. So, yeah, I have cards, but not for Shopify. So <laughs> they're some really great things. Uh, I did put up, so what they're offering right now, if you go down in the link below, free for three days. And then one month, your first month is a dollar. And then you check it out, and it's not much more than that. So go check it out. Let me know what you think. We also have another one that I want to uh, point out today that my wife uh, signed us up for. And I have had them, uh, their gummies, but they have lots of great things. And that's Pure Hemp Botanicals. Ooh. They get you a nice, nice little stagnant high. I liked it. It was really nice. Yeah. Like It made me very chill to watch movies with. Um, and right now they're offering 25% off Delta 9 THC. Uh, you can go down in the link below. And you can get your offer. So go check them out on the scenes now sent you. Uh, I would like to tell you guys, um, we are pitching a little bit more with the sponsor stuff like that. We're growing. We have more shows coming. Lots of fun stuff. If you like the channel, we always appreciate that support that goes into it. We always appreciate all the things that you guys do for us. Uh, and, um, you know, check out the sponsors and whatnot, but other ways that you can support is we have a Patreon and, uh, I think it's pretty good Patreon. Uh, Paul, you've been a patron of the Patreon. You can tell them, uh, but some things that I want to share that we do there, uh, we have different, um, tiers available of course but we do movie insider news uh some fun ones for our higher tiers we just did a big movie drop there's some really fun stuff you can go check out there uh special merch discount pricing you know you get certain we have uh, special codes for you uh first chance of exclusive updates merch and more all that stuff exclusive shows we're gonna have an excuse exclusive live show that's gonna be coming on wednesdays that's gonna be on our patreon uh and for our discord members only uh and then we are also are going to be doing, um, you know, Warp Factor Fiction and a couple other things that we have going on. So hopefully you guys will be a part of that. But one thing I am offering, and it starts at the Mega Fan tier, and it's it's time with me because I hate podcast coaching. But <laughs> and not to boast, I'm very good at this. Mm -hmm. I yeah, you know, I I've been doing this for 12 years, got 13 actually at this point. Um and i'm good at this i'm good at posting i'm good at creating stuff am i the perfect perfect well podcasting i, I know a lot <laughs> if 
filmmaking I can fill you in on. I'm not trying to sell, toot my own horn, but all this stuff, I don't have a program for it. I have a system and I don't feel like being the guy who's like, I'm going to put my system together for you and you're going to have this. I'd rather be the guy like if you're supporting me on Patreon, you want a little time each month, like, you know, $10 at the $10 tier. It's like 20, 20 minutes uh, every month at the $20 tier. I think it's like $30 each month. Uh, and then at the $50 tier and above, it's uh, an hour. And during that time, we could talk about any aspect of all those things, filmmaking, all aspects of filmmaking too. I'm happy to talk to you about, I talk about lighting. I want to talk about camera work. You want to talk about what's going to, you know, what shots should you do? Consulting. That's these guys, they come into labs all the time and it's just, ideas you know and like i'm trying to help you build out like so it's not just about talking about your podcast and be like let's start what you want to talk about well what do you finally tune what's your niche what do you really want to go for i'm gonna it's like when you meet a really good tattoo artist and they sit you down and they go i don't want to do an infinity symbol on you i'm an artist you want to go to a peddler a tattoo peddler go for it and that now i'm i this is me i'm literally (laughs) verbatim you know uh quoting a tattoo artist not myself but like it was like very funny situation but also at the same time very true like i spend all of my time doing this this is why i am who i am this is why i do what i do and it's the same thing like i want to help you with that stuff but i don't want to sell you shit that makes sense like i don't want to be like well buy this or buy my book or buy that no you want some time with me sit down what do you want to talk about what do you want to cover you want to talk you know i'll help you put it all together and then build it out and then give you a brand to package you know but it takes time so if you want to join up you can join up on the patreon that's down below that's another part of the tier happy to do that and we'll schedule that time um yeah other than that snobs horror snobs we got our merch store go to snobsmerch.com use promo code snobs for 10 percent off your order. that's right and we also have one of my favorites the godzilla errors tour design that's up there you can get the <laughs> stickers you can get the shirts all that jazz remember carolina fear fest their tickets are on sale now go get them we are official media partners we will be there having a great time talking to the celebs talking to the vendors talking to the people because that's what's so much fun actually i love talking to people the most but you know we're gonna be doing panels the whole in the whole night it's gonna be a great time so join in with us I know it was a little long-winded. I appreciate you joining in. Paul, you got anything you want to add before we go? Hey, it's Snobbery Week, so be kind and uh, make sure to wipe front to back. I love it. I'm going to jump off that. (laughs) He's absolutely right. Be kind to each other because that's important. Stay classy. Take care of yourselves because that is also important. We will talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.